Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing game from the TSAC Season 17 Super Final. This is in Round 4, so Leela had just suffered a crushing uh, defeat at the hands of Stockfish in this same variation. This is the other side of the coin now, with Leela playing white in a Sicilian Shaveningen, the dreaded Keres attack. So the opening moves given, it's this, and now a6, this is the end of the book. But Leela playing white, what will Leela do? Well, g5 is chosen, that is a space gainer, bishop e3, b5, a3, bishop b7, and now a kind of different plan altogether from Stockfish. Instead of using the h pawn, we see the f pawn being used here in this game. Knight c6, and now rook g1. This is a very, very interesting uh, idea just to use these uh, pawns as a shield for a nifty rook maneuver sometimes that would be very dangerous if black ever castled kingside of course we have rook c8 and rook g3 lurking around just in case black is tempted to castle kingside bishop e7 and now f5 this tries to undermine the d5 square for black and putting pressure on e6 immediately which has to be addressed we have knight takes queen takes e5 so there is a Bolslavsky hole on d5. That hole on d5 is is often uh, why Leela wins a lot of positional games against the Sicilian defence. If black had just castled here instead of that committal e5, then black's going to end up having to play e5 anyway. There's a strong idea of f6 lurking around right now. So eventually it's going to have to, have to be played and white ends up with uh, a very strong bind on the position. As there's a big positional advantage here in any case with attacking prospects so e5 was played straight off the bat queen d2 queen a5 and now after castling queenside stockfish seems a little bit impatient here uh, and just plays an immediate exchange sack uh, it does look pretty dangerous to castle given that there's things like f6 in the air here so this exchange sack uh, queen takes is the safest. If b takes, then taking here and bishop takes with the idea of going back to d5 is very strong for black. That's winning for black. So the safest way is queen takes, getting the queens off. Bishop takes e4. So a pawn for the exchange and attacking f5. That's indirectly protected with bishop e3. We have bishop a8. And now an immediate undoubling of the pawns. With c4, we have bishop c6. If b takes c4, then this is going to be fine uh, for white. This kind of thing, targeting d6. Uh, this position is very, very nice. The exchange up. White's well, just uh, better here with a big advantage creeping up. So bishop c6, we have c takes, a takes c4. So resolving these pawns, bishop takes c4, which means actually as well, if castling, then there's g6, there's that f7 pawn pinned. We have bishop e4, a4. This is a dangerous pass pawn as well now. Another kind of impatient looking move, d5 from Stockfish. Uh, if bishop takes f5 instead, then a5. It's big trouble. Uh, this position with bishop d5 leaning over the queening square for the pawn. And these bishops are working very well together. Uh, white sort of uh, ties down black because of that big past a pawn big advantage there so we have d5 and now uh, guess what Leela plays in this position if I give you five seconds to pause the video here white's play what would you play okay an exchange sack yes this means that the bishop is leaning over the queening square the two bishops work very well together with this past pawn we have rook takes, bishop takes. You can see their cooperation is great. Bishop b4 stopping a5. Uh, you know, if black had just castled, then a5. And this is uh, very nice for white. Uh, it's going to be very nice for white. So um, bishop b4, we have rook g4 hitting the bishop. The bishop moves. Rook c4, king e7. If castling, it runs into uh, g6. Yes, that pinned f7 pawn, and that's not very nice at all for black. Okay, so king e7. 
we have rook c6 which deprives the use of knight b6 there as one perk rook d8 bishop c4 king f8 bishop b5 e4 and this looks rather desperate and impatient as well uh, so what what is the big deal here because uh, after all you might argue now well it's equal on pawns but the bishops in that a pawn is very very dangerous for black if e4 isn't played say knight b8 then as an example after some messing around white just ends up with a big position here and black is not doing much it's pretty devoid of counterplay uh, this position uh, it's it's just very very strong for white so this this does seem a little bit desperate but it's going to otherwise there's just no counterplay bishop f4 we have another move e3 giving up a, a pawn so if knight b6 here um bishop c7 runs into bishop c7 and the tactics basically seem to uh, favor white anyway so uh this is starting to be miserable again materially for black uh, so a pawn down without too much compensation rook a6 we have check bishop b4 h3 priving g4 from that knight uh, king g8 king e2 bishop c3 rook d6 bishop b4 okay some shuffling let's have a look some probing now here committal decision giving up the bishop so it's opposite color bishops is this enough for white to win what do you think uh, it is opposite color bishops rook c5 king f7 yep that e5 is dropping so it's two pawns now uh, can black really set up an effective blockade against the two extra extra pawns well white's squeezing now and g6 form pawn ish so here some space gaining king coming up king c5 we have check king c4 now rook e5 which hits the bishop also now there's an f6 to hit h5 that disconnected pawn is a potential target not yet though and again the rook's about to make h5 a target soon after some high level shuffling <laughs> quite a lot of high level shuffling in fact here rook e5 again h5 is a target now we have check and now finally f6 so that's the key move which creates now two connected past pawns uh, so these are pretty dangerous to handle the king has to uh, tie itself up to lock down these pawns uh, but now white's able to make advances with the a pawn the king coming up the king's much more active than the black king is a prisoner with blockade duties and now uh, king making great inroads g7 there rook e7 trying to deflect away from g8 a7 yes it looks pretty much over that's desperate bishop e3 so now it's just trivially uh, one position yeah a positional style win from Leela not really a, a major hack attack against the king just showing the importance of an outside pass pawn how lethal that can be with the bishop pair uh, so incredibly different style of play from the same opening position uh, for how the win was actually achieved so uh, yeah if if you're interested more in the positional elements like past pawns I think leaders great study because you're, you're going to get a lot more of those types of games with leader than stockfish uh, but if you're into gory tactics and attacking the king then stockfish uh, you know if you look at that game version of this is, is to be uh, inspirational so whatever inspires you Leela for positional play it seems and past pawns and pawn management and stockfish for tactics and combinations so it's like Capablanca versus Alakine this match Capablanca like Leela and Alakine like stockfish so um, I hope you enjoyed this game uh, if you want to invite me for a game kingscrusher.tv and register there and I'll invite you for a game shortly uh, after or bit.ly slash chess world there's also kingscrusher tv slash discord chat is getting quite lively recently and there's king's crusher uh, emojis and stuff fun stuff playlists to check out bitly leela chess bitly magnus colson chess 
Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, um, all appreciated. Thanks so much.